Okay, so this is another wall video here. It's part 284C3MI. Um, this is going to be research in UFO core designs. That's what's on this video. Line 22F1FA 19 c 3 MI focal planes laser beam bending math core design UFO 5G wall study. So there's the alien radial signal and here's a graph here with the object convergent lens back focal plane and image plane. So rays that leave the object with the same angle across at the back focal plane. So August 4th 2012 I was working on this data. Today's November 22nd 2012. So angle filtering with the aperture at the rear focal plane. So I'm going to quote from Wiki. A diaphragm or stop at the rear focal plane can be used to filter rays by angle since it only allows rays to pass that are emitted at an angle relative to the optical axis that is sufficiently small. An infinitely small aperture would only allow rays that are emitted along the optical axis to pass. No matter where on the object the rays come from, the ray will pass through the aperture as long as the angle at which it is emitted from the object is small enough. Note that the aperture must be centered on the optical axis for this to work as indicated using a sufficiently small aperture in the focal plane will make the lens tel telecentric. Similarly, the allowed range of angles on the output side of the lens can be filtered by putting an aperture at the front focal plane of the lens. Um, important for your cameras, but we're not talking about cameras today. We are talking a bit about cameras. There's a concept for cameras that you can use for the spaceship, okay? So here's the diagrams that I found. Various lens shapes and the location of the principal planes. So quotes and diagrams from Wiki. The principal planes are crucial in defining the optical properties of the system. Since it is the distance of the object and image from the front and rear principal planes that determine the magnification of the system. The principal points are the points where the principal planes cross the optical axis. So there's the nodal points. N and the front and rear nodal points of a thick lens and a beam of light leaving the lens horizontal meridian and vertical meridian. Okay, This is the mechanism of production of astis, astigmatism. Illustrated at left is a beam of light leaving the lens. Because the radius of curvature is greater along the horizontal meridian, the light passing through that meridian is focused at point B, whereas light passing through the vertical meridian of lesser radius of curvature comes to focus near at point A. That's from MichaelDman.net from his blog. Calculations for bending a beam. These are all his little diagrams that he created. Um, just showing the different angles and stuff where you want to do. Coordinations for beam sections. Quotes. How would one go about stimulating, simulating a desired network of beams? Well, one way would be to imagine a three-dimensional cube that covers the area to be served. Three-dimensional because the terrain usually underlights and the beams have to adapt to that to some extent. Moreover, there must be sloping beams that stops and so forth. To calculate coordinates and angular orientation of curved constant speed guideways in a series of segments containing curved slopes, offline stations, and straight runs, we will start at a given set of coordinates for XYZ. The Z coordinate is of course the height above a reference ground and then as we add new sections to this gradually growing network, we will need to designate the X, Y, and Z coordinates for the endpoint of straight section as well as angular coordinates for curved sections. As might be realized, a beam section that alternates between straight and curved beams might have to be subdivided into smaller sections separate by artificial nodes in order to handle this section mathematically. So we're going to use the azimuth angle. Quote, the azimuth angle is in astronomy the angle on the horizon between due south and the point towards the western horizon where a straight line from zenith through a certain star hits the horizon. The position of a star in heaven at a certain time can always be determined by two angles. The azimuth, the angular height from that point to the horizon towards zenith. Uh, they, don't have, they have a typo on their site. Yeah. Generally speaking, all curved beams could be regarded as part of a circle with a specific radius of curvature. We then need to determine the center of this imagined circle, the angle at the start of the segment and the angle at the end of the segment, counted from a reference point in the azimuth plane. The advantage of this method is that we, if we build this simulated network in real life, we will get beam sections with constant radiuses of curvature. 
This means that we could calculate with a certain speed and a certain acceleration for this section. Care must of course be taken that the beams are not joined in such a way so as to create sudden changes in this radius of curvature. So these are his, um, this is, I guess this is his theory and it looked interesting so I blogged it. The circle center, the circle radius, those are the math equations that you'll need to use to create this. Quote, in this manner we have found a way to convert between the circular coordinates of curved beams and the straight coordinates of the XY system. Sloping beams can then be treated in a similar manner and be mapped out onto the XYZ coordinate system. Sloping beams are in themselves straight, but the junctures between horizontal and sloping beams can be regarded as vertical curves. The most complicated features to map onto a coordinate system would be those beams that bend horizontally and vertically at the same time. But these formulas make it possible to tackle the situation as well. I found the formulas at www.sweetietrack.com. Okay, July 30, 2012, I was working on the data. Today's November 22nd. Look at lines 22F1, F8, 19C3, M to MK videos for more formulas about the spheres, the core of the, of the UFO spaceship designs, and the super alloys listed to use. My thoughts. The core of the UFO comes to mind with all these bending laser calculations. A curved beam in coordinates, see alien videos line 17 for math equations to use. XY coordinate system, the sloping beam junctures, map coordinate system, bending lasers horizontally and vertically at the same, exact same time. Use the math equations given in these videos and you will succeed. And that's from Errol. Okay, thank you for watching. I'll go on to the next one.